If you're anything like me, when you first bought your bowl saver, you experienced a lot of tenons snapping off and the bowl landing on the ground. You experienced catches when you were coring the bowl and also stalling the lathe and having the motor squealing at you. So I've come up with five key fundamental areas that I will address in this video. The first thing being lathe requirements and setup. I will then go through and address accessories that speed up my workflow and make it safer for myself. And then I will get into the operations of how to use the bowl corer and doing relief cuts. Let's start with the first thing and the lathe setup and requirements of your lathe. The main thing you have to make sure before purchasing a bowl corer is to, to see that your lathe has the requirements. So in their user guide, they've got a minimum requirement of 1.5 horsepower motor. The main reason I'm pointing this out is because I hear people all the time, they're stalling their lathe, they're getting big catches, they just don't have that power to be able to core bowls out. So also in setting up your machine, I'm gonna try and get through these as quick as possible. In setting up your machine, make sure that you have it on the highest pulley setting. And now what I mean by that, and as you can see inside here, I've got three separate wheels and this adjusts the torque with the pulley system here. So I move the belt to the largest pulley here, but this pulley here allows a maximum amount of torque to the spindle. And how to change the pulley is first things first is make sure the, not a laughing matter, make sure the power is off to your lathe before doing any of this adjustment. You flick this up, this little lever just here, and then you raise the motor up. And with the cover plate open, you simply move the belt across, and I go, to the, I go towards myself, and then up here, I move the belt over to the largest wheel. Once I'm done, I don't push it severely hard, but I just push it down a little bit, and then I can come back up here and make sure that I can depress my finger on the belt and I've got a little bit of cushion, but not too much slack where the belt will be that loose and it won't be able to grip onto the wheel. Before I start coring, I make sure that I'm cutting above the center of the lathe or five millimeters or 10 millimeters for really strong hardwoods. And I highly recommend this because if you have it dropped below, it's like anything, it's gonna put a lot of pressure and a lot of force and tension down onto that blade and you're just gonna get a heap of catches when you're trying to push the knife through. So I set it five millimeters above center. Hardwoods, 10 millimeters. So when you're happy with the cutter height, come down here to the post collar, your tool post collar, lock this guy off, and a little thing that I do sometimes is make a little mark there. So if you're coring all day or through vibration and you, you lose that line, you can't see it anymore, you know that you need to readjust your, cu your cutter height. So you always bang on that right height every time. So before I start coring green timber, I always make sure I give the lathe a little lick of some lanolin spray or some silicon spray. I don't use WD-40, but I use these to prevent that surface rust from building up. But also, it just makes such an easy session when you are at the lathe and it just gets you back coring with, without having to fight your tail stock and your banjo because that surface rust can bind, can bind things up metal on metal and it just, by the end of the day, you're moving things around and you just get tired, so yes. And now number two is accessories. And by no means am I telling you to go out and buy more tools, even though I believe that 99.9% .9 of us love having more tools to our disposal. But this has just made my life easier and I wanna share it with you, so hopefully it can help you as well. So the first thing I went out and purchased is these T-Hex Allen keys. And we all know what it's like when we buy a bit of furniture and they give you those little, those little Allen keys to use and we drop them and that we fumble around and it drives us absolutely in nuts. So I went out and purchased these because as you can imagine, when you wanna go and switch from the small blade to the large blade, you're undoing for this machine is two screws. With the Max 4, it's three. How I go about changing the blade is super easy as well. I bring that handle underneath my armpit, as long as it's clean, I guess, and then un <laughs> undo them like that. And that just makes life so much easier. You're standing upright still, you're not hunched over trying to get that little Allen key to work. 
and you can pick these up pretty cheap. Just do your shopping around, you'll find a cheap set and they all do the same thing. And the next thing is just a engineer's square and this will become more important later when we, oh, apologies, when we talk about using these templates. And these templates will come in your kit provided when you buy uh, this bowl corer. When you use these templates, you'll see in a minute, because I've got a 16 inch piece of timber, when you want to get over the top of it, you need to sort of get that straight line running up. So I just use this little engineer square that I have um, and it works in an absolute treat. Thank you, father-in-law. These templates, what I've done is put them on with a little bit of that spray adhesive stuff. So a little bit of spray adhesive and I just spray it on the cardboard and then stuck these down and then cut them out with the jigsaw, a little bit of sanding around the edges to make them a little bit, little bit pretty. Next on the accessory list is a credit card hone or a just a general hone. So these ones here, and the reason why I'm showing you this is because every time you want to sharpen the Stellite cutter, you don't have to take it off the unit over to your sharpening station. You simply just, you can do it right here on the lathe when you're working and that just speeds things up and gets you going a little bit more quicker and spending more time turning instead of sharpening and doing all that business. The humble old air compressor, when I'm coring, as you can imagine, cause you've got these screws here, you're gonna get a build up of shavings somewhere. So having it close by, doesn't mean you have to go reaching for it or walking away from your work area. You can just stand right there and then knock, knock the dust out of these little Allen key holes or you need to clean the bed off. You need to spray underneath the platform just to get a bit of relief from underneath the platform if there's ends up getting little fines in there. The last jig is what I use when I'm using my laser guide. So this jig is predominantly used when I'm using the Max 4, but I'll try and show you how I use it when I'm using this unit as well. And I've set this up so that bit of block of wood there is the width of the dovetail jaws. This block of wood is for the Max knife and that block of wood there is for the small knife. And it'll make more sense in just a sec. The laser guide is simply, it's got three holes which represent three different blades for the Max 4, but you can use it for this guy as well. You just need to align the laser up with the blade and then run it around the back, but that will become more pertinent in a second. Now, number two on the list is tenon formation and chuck size. And now I've seen a lot of people online and we can all relate, we've all been there. We've had tenons snap, we've had tenons shear off cleanly and it just happens, right? But the main thing when you are coring, for myself especially here in Australia, we have some of the hardest timbers going around. And I experienced a lot of tenons getting ripped off when I first started. And the reason being is because I didn't read the instructions fully, but the tenon needs to be a 50% of the overall diameter of your bowl. And now that is a massive tenon as you can see on the back of this, but it works also for not shearing tenons off and creating a nice smooth, steady ride when you're coring. But when you're drying and stacking these up, that massive tenon there allows the whole tier of bowls not to topple over like a set of dominoes or something like that. This tenon here fits inside this Vicmark chuck here, which is a 200 millimeter chuck, and I bought that off Vicmark Tools. I'm not saying you need to go out and buy this size chuck. Just get the overall size of, of bowls that you, that you core out. Sorry, I don't know, I think I've got a possum in the shed. Just get the overall diameter of bowl that you core and then go out and get that size chuck. Now, when you are preparing your tenon, I've just taken this dovetail jaws off to show you. You can see within there that I have a nice flat section. That section is flat, meeting to that corner, that shoulder of my dovetail jaws. And I do that with the skew when I'm cutting my tenons. And when I place this tenon section up against it, you can see that it fits just beautifully and there is a gap underneath there so that my tenon isn't bottoming out, I'll just grab another pointer, isn't bottoming out 
in the base of the dovetail jaws when I have them mounted on the lathe. And they say to have a perfect circle when it is closed. If it's a little bit open and you know, you could fit, you know, a five cent or 20 cent coin or, you know, there's a bit of a gap there between the jaws all the way around. That's not too bad, it's okay, you'll get away with it. But I try and aim for a perfect circle. So when these are closed, it's squishing all those fibers together and having a really strong hold on the timber that you're coring. So now we're ready to start coring. I'm going to show you how to use this jig as well as the laser guide on the large knife, just to purely speed this video up because there's a really important relief cut that I make that is with the large knife and if you can nail the small knife or nail the large knife and get it done perfectly you'll be you'll be home and hose so i believe where most people come unstuck is using the large knife so i'll show you how to use this jig on the side here. and how it works is this distance here is 36 mil because i've accounted for the width of the stellite cutter and relief cuts that i make so what I do is I line this mark up here with the outside of the bowl and then I go and mark one mark there for the first core. That distance there is the second core. That distance there is the third core. And then that there is the mother bowl within this section here. So once I've made my marks, I then come over and line up that cutter edge with, with my line here. I then get my laser guide. So once I've mounted my laser in, I put it in the appropriate hole that it needs to go in. So then I come down here and make sure that the laser is running on the outermost part of the cutter head, because that'll be the deepest part of where that goes. And then I move it around in the back here. I use my little template guide to make sure I'm not gonna go into the next bowl. And that, then I make a little mark there. I get my little marker or something like that. I make a little mark. And then, then I know that that is the deepest part of where that cutter head will go. I'm only gonna call one bowl out here because I've made more of these videos that I'll link in the description that go into all this process with a lot more detail. I'll show you how to make a relief cut and the reason why I use relief cuts and I suggest that you should as well is because it allows the extraction of the shavings to come out a lot easier. It's only about 25 mil deep into the timber and then you shift back over to your mark to allow the extraction of the shavings to come out over the knife. So let's get into that. So we've got our mark here of where we're gonna go and start the first core. You simply undo the little lever underneath here undo the banjo and then just come across and then slide the banjo across about five five mil or so do everything back up make sure everything's locked off so what i like to do when i start coring is just place my hand here for a little support on that blade and that just allows a little bit more of a sturdy cut when you first make that little entry cut and it'll sound a little bit violent when it first starts but that's just all all part of it, making sure everything's locked off and we're ready to go. So bring up the speed of the lathe. I don't go over 500 RPMs, but I'll just bring it up just gently. Face shield down, hand on this, just to, hand on the blade, just to give a, a bit of support and just start making your way in. I'm gonna pull up there, loosen this back off, come back over, find my mark, shift my banjo back over. So now you can see what I mean by that relief cut. And just example, just imagine that this was over here and we're going all the way around the back of this bowl and we're trying to extract those shavings out. It'll have a hard time doing it if you're just making that single cut. So everything's locked off again. My face shield is down. We start the lathe back up. So when I'm coring here, I don't force the handle through. I let the cutter do the work. I let it bind and find its way through. I then bring the handle out 
every so often and that clears those shavings out. And then reintroduce the cutter again. You'll find your way. When you start doing it more and more, you'll fall in love with it and you just wanna, you'll wanna core everything and you'll get that, you'll get that feel. And now I can feel that, that cutter. Here, I'll put me a little, me a little flipper finger on there. I can feel that that cutter is just making its way through there just beautifully. And I've got one finger on that. Let those shavings come out, reintroduce. And I don't always do that. So now I go away and document the bowls and seal the end grain for air drying. If you're interested in that, I'll link the video just here of how to do that whole process. And then this video here will show you the whole process of coring out bowls in a little mini series that I made on my Max 4 Bowl Saver. Thank you so much Wood Woodcut Tools for supplying this bowl saver today. And thank you all for watching and supporting me throughout this whole process. It's you that makes this channel possible. So thank you so much. I'll talk to you all directly. Cheers, bye.